Hey Internet, welcome to another episode of Mr. Ford's Guide to the a Certification Exam. In this episode, we take a look at the fundamentals, the CPU basics. Hey, so welcome back. In this video, I want to take a look at the basics of what a CPU is, what it does, and basically how it works. Now, before we get into this, we need to talk about analogies. Every expert in computers that I've ever seen, talked to, read, heard, whatever, we all have analogies in how we describe how the CPU works. Now, my background is in life science. I've taught college anatomy and physiology for oh, over eight years. And so I like to think of the CPU and the things that work with it as the brain and the nervous system. Now, you probably know what the brain is and the nervous system is from elementary school, middle school, high school. The brain, the brain, is where we process information. It's where we feel things. It's where we think about things. It's where information is stored and acted upon and all this stuff. But the brain doesn't act on its own. Oh, no, 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 it doesn't. What it requires is information to get into the brain and information to come out of the brain. And that's where the nerves come in. So as we're talking about the CPU, you'll hear me talk about the brain and the nervous system a couple of times. Now, there's some people out there who are like, oh, it's not the brain, whatever. You, you, if you like what they say, go listen to them. However, in this world, we like to talk about the CPU in the terms of the brain. And by the way, just like the brain has different parts of it, like for example, we have parts of the brain that deal with speech. We have different parts of the brains that deal with short-term memory, long-term memory, smell, taste, all this different stuff. There's different parts of the CPU that deal with different types of information. So speaking of that, let's actually talk about the CPU. The computer has both support structures and the little brain that interprets data, i.e. the CPU, i.e. the brain, right? The primary processor is known as the central processing unit. So you might hear me throw the term CPU out quite a bit. That's basically the central processing unit. We don't like to say big words. We always like to abbreviate them. And there are other structures that help the CPU do its job. So back to the brain. We think, we interpret information as a series of impulses. Either a signal is sent or it's not sent. If it's sent, it's on. It's uh, actually called the all or none principle. Either a neuron fires or it doesn't fire. And the same thing can be said for the CPU. Either an electrical pulse is sent or electricity is not sent. Either a signal is there or it's not there. Now, if it's there, then that would be on. It's on. There's something on the wire. There's an electrical charge. It's on. If there's nothing being sent, then that would be a zero. So we have either an on state or an off state. We both for our nervous system as well as for computers. This is binary. If you've ever heard the term binary, I think I've talked about it in earlier videos, but binary is how we count in the world of computers. You know, one, ah, 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 zero, ah, 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 binary. Ah, anyway. Some of you got that. All you old people like me got that. Some of you younger people are like, what is he talking about? Moving on. Machine code and programming. Machine code is the most basic language of the computer. Ultimately, everything that you program into a computer is drilled down, boiled down, reduced to machine code, and that's the zeros or ones that the computer can understand. Now, programming language, so for example, I work out here at Lone Star Community College, and we have some amazing programs here at the Kingwood College campus on programming. And you can learn C Sharp, you can learn all sorts of different computer programming. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it goes down to the same root it goes down to the same base which is the computer interprets it as machine code the zeros or ones and it's the same thing as the brain folks for example you're hearing what i'm saying to you and the the sound waves are hitting the tympanic membrane information is being sent blah, blah 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 it's ultimately boiling down to my voice is ultimately boiling down to either a signal is sent or it's not sent and that's what the brain is making sense of all right so what kind of CPU do you have on your computer? There is a really easy way to find out. Uh, if you have a PC or Mac, it's going to vary depending on what you want to do. 
So let's take a look at a PC first. First, you want to find your My Computer icon. You want to find your My Computer uh, button on your desktop or on your computer somewhere. You want to right click on it and then go to Properties. The information is going to be listed under the computer. Now, if you have a Mac, if you're on a, a, an Apple, you are going to click on the Apple top right part of the desktop. If you look to the right top portion, whichever way you're looking at, on um, your desktop, there's that little Apple. You click on that one. You click on the About This Mac, and then you can get more information by clicking on More Info or the System Report. There's also another program that will give you a great deal of information, and I highly recommend you download this, and I'll put the, uh, the link in the description. It's called CPUZ. Easy for me to say, CPUZ. And it's a free program for Windows. It looks like there's a version for the Android. I don't see any versions for the Mac, unfortunately. But it's a free program, and it tells you a whole bunch about your CPU, about your cache. So you'll definitely want to download a copy of that for this, this chapter that we're going to go through. Okay, also we have something called integrated circuits. Integrated circuits connect transistors and other electronic components on chips of semiconductor material, usually silicon. That's why it's called Silicon Valley. Because Silicon Valley, this silicon is what allows integrated circuits to work and it allows the computers ultimately to be computers. And the final concept I want to introduce before we leave this video is something called Moore's Law. Now, Gordon Moore is one of the co-founders of Intel. Intel, of course, being the biggest and most influential CPU manufacturer ever. And uh, he was a co-founder. And his law states that the number of transistors incorporated in a chip will approximately double every 24 months. If you take a look at the history of CPUs, and again, I'm not going to go into that in this series of videos. I want to keep on topic. If you want more, boom, this book, excellent. Uh, but you see the amount of improvement on CPUs is just, it's staggering. I mean, we're not talking like little increases. We're talking just major evolutionary leaps here. Now, I said transistor, and I really need to define transistor. A transistor is like a neuron in the body. It's uh, that single nerve cell. The transistor is what actually allows the computer to manipulate electrical signals. Basically, the more transistors we can put on a chip, the more processing power it has. So that's going to take care of our introduction to CPUs video. Be sure to click that subscribe button, click like if you liked it, if you learned anything, and uh, tune in. Our next video is going to be on the CPU and the buses. But until then, good luck studying out there, and goodbye for now.